Hey everybody and welcome to another Darkest Dungeon mod overview. My name is Element5 and tonight we're taking a look at the cutest little timid bookworm to have found her way into the hamlet, the Librarian. Now the Librarian is just a really very well developed modded class that, um, as Muscarine said, probably deserves to be included in the base game list of vanilla characters just because she's just very well balanced and uh, for the most part fills kind of a niche that exists in Darkest Dungeon the way the Antiquarian did. So whereas an Antiquarian was put into the game to sort of help you deal with the economic grind in Darkest Dungeon, uh, much of the purpose of the Librarian is to help you deal with the experience grind of Darkest Dungeon. And that actually is not an easy thing to pull off and has been done very, very well. Now it should be said that the Librarian is actually known as the Librarian Community Project. And that is because of the just massive list of talented modders who went into her conception and development. Uh, you have Balgan, Stonedrag, and Moonslime who did a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of the coding and development and lore and background and conceptualization of the character. But you also have Muscarine doing the animations, Acero Steel with character artworks, uh, Exalus uh, helped out as well with the coding. You also have uh, Gil Gaming to thank for doing a bunch of the audio work, who also worked with Kuro Chibi, uh, who did a lot of the voice acting. I mean, the list just goes on. Claire de Lune had a hand in uh, really making her something that is unique for Pitch Black Dungeon. And then, of course, that led to the optional patch for the Librarian, which is a slightly different way to play her, which we'll get to in a bit. But nonetheless, just a, an incredibly talented group of folks who pitched together to make this character what she is, and they should all be really proud. Now, in terms of her backstory, the description reads, Having spent some time studying abroad, the librarian finally returns to the hamlet. While she'd much rather settle down by the hearth with a good book, she is often reluctantly dragged out adventuring by her friends and companions. At home among treatises, tales, and legends, this humble student of knowledge seeks merely to cram as much valuable information into her skull as possible and keep it there. That being said, her companions value her sage advice, for all can benefit from the wisdom contained within old stories and folklore. The book she bears is an evil tome full of forbidden lore. She keeps it close to prevent it from falling into the wrong hands. When asked what kind of hands are wrong, she will respond, the irresponsible ones. Now, interestingly, she happens to be afraid of dogs, and this is reflected in the fact that if you try to group her with, say, uh, the werewolf modded class, this little bookworm is unnerved by my presence, or, uh, or even just a houndmaster, my dog seems to scare her, it will not work. So, an interesting little piece of flavor, she's not a religious character, but she does have limitations in terms of a couple classes that she cannot group with. Now, before we jump into all of her abilities, let's just talk real quickly about how she works as an experienced version of the Antiquarian. So if you mouse over some of her abilities, you're gonna see this down at the bottom of a lot of them. Buff party plus 5% resolve XP. So what that means is, as you're playing her and you're using some of her abilities, uh, you're going to be passively buffing the party with a stacking, ramping, resolve XP buff gain, which can be very significant, especially in longer dungeons. If you really want to level up a bunch of people straight off the stagecoach and get them caught up to wherever you are in the game, you can absolutely take the Librarian with those characters and into a longer dungeon and just keep ramping that based on using her abilities over and over. It is important to note, however, that if you camp with her, all of that stacking resolve XP buff will uh, clear away. The fact that the XP buff is cleared after camping allows you to sort of think about how you want to do that. Do you want to camp early in a run and get the group buffed and then just really ramp as much experience gain into the characters as you want? Or maybe you want to play her and not even worry about experience gain and then just camp at the end and clear it off and then you don't have to worry about certain characters outleveling certain others. Now before we jump into her abilities, it's just important to add that the, the original concept of the Librarian was that she was sort of a character moving through the world who has kind of these different abilities that she can do, uh, but she's finding powerful books along the way and they change her abilities. And an example of that is the book that bites back, okay? This is a Librarian only, uh, one of her corrupting books set, basically adds bleed resist max HP speed at the cost of a little bit of stress, but this is the important piece here, on hit bleed 120% chance 
uh, one over four. So by equipping this trinket, you are now making the antiquarians uh, aggressive or uh, aggressive abilities or debuffs uh, with the included effect of adding a bleed to them. And you're going to find books throughout the world, which are a ton of fun to find, that maybe add blight chance or movement or self movement, etc. So now that we know who she is and what she does in your party, let's talk about how she works. And we'll start uh, with her first ability, Beat Back. Now, Beat Back is uh, her only melee ability and is basically her only offensive ability. You can use it in position one or two and it can only attack the enemy position one or two. Uh, now, the important piece here is that it has a knockback two chance as well as a stun chance, which is fairly reasonable. So a decent chance, not going to do a lot of damage, but the purpose of it is to just basically slam something with her book and send it to the back line, maybe stun it, and then have the back line come forward. And again, the important piece to note here is that at the bottom you have self knockback to 0% base. So it's very possible you could come across one of her corrupting books trinkets or one of her books trinkets and it would actually give her some movement ability which would then allow this to not only shuffle the enemy back but also shuffle herself back to the back line. So next in her kit is Know Thy Enemy. Know Thy Enemy is a ranged ability, is her marking ability. Uh, I think typically when I think about taking the Librarian, I think about wanting to capitalize on this particular ability because it is so powerful as a marking ability. Um, it marks the target, it debuffs the target for damage received. So at level four, the enemy that you mark will be taking a whopping 35% damage received, as well as buffing the entire party by 5% resolve XP. So if you just think about the implications of not only putting a mark on something, but of also having it take a ton of extra damage, even if you don't have any mark synergy with an Arbalist, or a Hound Master, or a Bounty Hunter, etc. in your party, still using this to debuff a target for extra damage received is super useful. So next in her kit is Forbidden Chant. Forbidden Chant is only usable in rank 3 or 4, and it targets all of the enemies. It's a powerful ability to hit all enemies and just flat debuff the damage they do by 25%. Uh, this comes then at the cost of stressing her out, plus 13 at level 4. That's a pretty significant uh, stress hit. But the interesting thing about this is, again, if you think about some of the books she might find, uh, like the one that I had showed just a second ago This doing this will not only debuff all of the enemies It will also add the desired effect that the book brings so you might add a bleed to all of the enemies for example or a blight or shuffle them around So next in her kit is peace of mind and it is very simply just a stress heal. It is stress minus eight. She can use it on herself or anybody in the party, and she cannot use it in rank one. Uh, but that's it. For the most part, very simple, very reasonable stress heal. And it certainly helps if you combine, if you think about taking the stress penalty of throwing down a powerful debuff like Forbidden Chant, and then just cooling yourself off by reading a little poem. Also buffing the party by 5% resolve XP. So next in her kit is Improvised Tactics. Now, I kind of love the idea behind this because uh, in the title is that notion that context matters in battle. So you're improvising what's happening around you all the time. And because you're knowledgeable, because knowledge is power, you are able to be tactical in all different kinds of situations. So if we just take a look at the array of buffs here, you get 12 accuracy if the torch is above 50, but you get crit if the torch is below 51. You get 16 dodge if your HP is below 10%, but plus 10 dodge on the first round, plus 10 prot after first round, and the added little hit of resolve XP across the party. So 
Uh, this is a really interesting ability because you can use this as much as you want, and depending on the situation you're in, will allow you to have a different desired outcome. So next in her kit is her heal, and it's probably more accurate to say this is her cure plus heal over time. She does not have a direct heal, uh, so tonics and tinctures at level 4, only use usable in position 3 or 4, so again, for the most part she's sort of limited to the back line here, uh, is going to cure a blight or bleed, and then add a heal over time of 5 uh, for 2 rounds, with the party resolve XP buff. So the interesting thing to note about this ability is uh, a few things that, you know, it is very powerful to have a cure in your group, especially if you're moving into the cove or a place where you're going to take on a bunch of bleeds, etc. Having cure can just straight negate a ton of damage taken. Also, heal over times are really, really valuable. If, for example, you get a character that hits to death's door and has a bleed on it, then you get to that character's turn and the bleed ticks and you die. We all know the pain of that in Darkest Dungeon. Well, the best part about heal over time is it ticks before a damage over time does. Now, the, uh, the other thing that I should include here in talking about how to optimally play the Librarian, and thank you Muscarine for pointing this out, is that the way to think about taking a healer that has heal over time ability is to not equip this character with uh, trinkets that buff healing because she doesn't have a direct healing. So you're not really going to be able to throw down something like Junia's head and get any benefit from plus 30% healing skills. That's just not how this works. So again, if I'm going to be taking her as a primary healer in my group, it is considerable then to think about having characters in the group that may be able to heal themselves, like a Houndmaster or a Leper, for example, or to be using things like a recovery charm plus healing received on characters so that when she does apply the heal over time, that heal over time is then boosted by healing received. Rather than landing a 5 over 2, for example, you're going to get something like an 8 over 2, which is going to just make her healing output that much stronger. The blood quickens. So last thing in her kit is clingy and needy. And I love this conceptually because she's sort of small and timid. And then, of course, is forcing another member of the party to guard her. Now, this works mechanically very much uh, like the Antiquarian's Force Guard, and it can be used in any position. But it has the added details of stressing that character out plus 13 at level 4, adding a block, which we'll talk about in a second, but also buffing the target for minus 20% damage received. So nice little added bit of survivability there, especially when you consider how powerful a block is. Now, blocks, as you may recall, come from uh, the DLC with the Shield Breaker. Shield Breaker came with Aegis Scales. To have a block is a very, very powerful mechanic. Uh, say you're going into a boss like the Swine King, who is going to cleave and mark target for a ton of damage, having a block at the right time to just completely negate that entire hit can be really, really useful. Of course, the trade-off with blocks then is sometimes you use them, and something as simple as a debuff will consume it. So if used at the right time, this could be a very, very powerful way to not only guard the librarian, but also save another character. Now, in terms of her camping utility, she has some pretty interesting options. For the most part, uh, revolving around de-stress and prevent ambush. Uh, and we'll start it off with a good story. A good story is time cost 5, okay? Pretty expensive, but it is a prevent nighttime ambush, and all other party members get 10% virtue chance and death blow resist for the next four battles. So again, this is a very expensive time cost 5, uh, which is sometimes a bit hard to swallow, but if you really need that Prevent Nighttime Ambush, uh, and, or, if you are just having a rough time and you think, you know, having 35% Virtue Chance as opposed to 25, or 
you know, uh, 77 as opposed to 67% chance death blow resist is going to help you out, then this is definitely worth the five points. So next is knowledge is power. Knowledge is power, uh, originally, I believe, time cost two, now a time cost three. All companions get 10 accuracy for four battles, plus 5% scouting chance, and 5% crit for four battles at the cost of four stress. So, uh, again, pretty decent group buff. Uh, decent amount of utility here. Important to note that because this is all companions get 5% scouting, that actually stacks. So what this really is, uh, is plus 15% scouting. Scouting, uh, I'm sure you're probably aware, very powerful in Darkest Dungeon because it helps you to see what's ahead of you, including quest items, traps, uh, fights, where boss fights are, etc. But also, scouting preventing your party from being surprised in combat, etc. So scouting is a pretty great utility, but so is accuracy, especially considering the changes coming after Color of Madness. So I like this, I like this as a camping utility quite a bit, and I think it's, I think at time cost three, it's, it's probably worth it. So then we have Soothing Chatter. Time cost four, one companion minus 15% stress damage received for four battles, and a remove mortality debuff. So, uh, you know, again, if you have a, char a character that reaches death's door, gets that mortality debuff, and you want that gone, this is a this is a means to do that, so a decent utility for that. Also, the added minus 15% stress damage received uh, buff doesn't hurt, but for the most part, you know, this is a third of your camping skill points, so depending on the context, you're not going to see a lot of use out of this, but in the right time, this could be pretty helpful. So last in her camping utility then is my favorite of her abilities, which is a riddle to solve. Time cost three, uh, really a pretty decent group de-stress. And I love, I just love the concept of this. I love that you're sitting in the middle of a dungeon in a dark corner somewhere around a campfire and you have this librarian with you who is trying to just have a little bit of fun, relax a little bit with the group, and she's got some riddles to solve, right? And so, of course, you have a all companions, 40% chance to reduce stress by 10, as well as 60% chance to reduce stress by 30, as well as 20% chance to add 20 stress, okay? So these are three independent dice rolls. First, you're going to get minus 10 stress, then you're going to have a 60% chance to get minus 30 stress, then you're going to have a 20% chance to get plus 20 stress. All in all, it's going to be a pretty decent group de-stress, but I love conceptually the idea that riddles you're not always going to solve. And so where you might actually be able to solve a couple riddles and feel really good about yourself and just and relax, you're also going to be kind of frustrated by a couple of them. So there's, there's where you get the 20% chance to gain a little bit of stress. Now it's important to note that there is also available an optional patch for the Librarian, which essentially mimics the way that Claire de Lune designed her for Pitch Black Dungeon. And the way that works is, instead of her abilities buffing the party for Resolve XP, which will then fall away after camping, she instead will move through the dungeon uh, looting curios the way an antiquarian does, and receiving certain scrolls and notes and research notes and tomes, uh, which you can then choose and decide which character in the group should get that particular research note or tome and then get that resolve XP buff. That buff lasting all the way until end of quest so you don't have to worry about it falling off on the camp. So we use her to loot stuff and we get this stuff, research notes, uh, which Claire wrote. Claire wrote a ton of these. The sacrificial altars harbor dark magic. Careful not to bleed around them for they can sense it. So we're going to definitely get the seeker up. Uh, offering is going to pop three, Norian is going to get close, and Kayla we're going to leave, I think, for the most part, to level up the rest of our lobies. So let's give this right here, and now we have plus 10% resolve XP moving forward. It's just a different way to play her. Uh, it allows you to be a little bit more selective in terms of who you want to power level. I tend to enjoy it myself, and I really appreciate the amount of work that Claire de Lune put into her rebalance in this way. Of course, I'll have the optional patch included in the information below the video, and it's just important to note that you need to load it above where you have the Librarian Community Project in the hierarchy, the load order of your mods on your save file. Whatever the case, she is a beautifully well done mod, uh, very tasteful, feels like she fits right into the Hamlet, and uh, the modding team behind her development, conception, and execution 
should be really, really proud of what they've done. I hope this brief overview of the librarian has been helpful. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section below. I will have the link to her download file as well as the optional and PBD patch files in the information below the video. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.